What's going on guys? Well today we're talking about this little guy right here. This is from Columbia River Knife and Tool, as you can see in the background there with the box. This is called the Art Deco. This is a neat little uh, slip joint. Definitely uh, an appropriate name, Art Deco, because it does have some modern flair to this design here and its aesthetics and uh, features. Pretty cool. For reference, this is model 6403 and also noteworthy, made in China. Now, I don't personally have any problem with Chinese knives these days. In fact, I just uh, was exposed to a new company. Uh, Chinese knives are like two or three hundred dollars a piece. They look amazing. <laughs> Maybe I'll uh, do a trade in the future and, and try one out, but uh, it's not what it used to be. Um, you know, people have their own personal stance on that, but as long as the quality is there, shouldn't make much of a difference to me. At least, uh, you know, my experience, I've had some Chinese knives that were better than American knives. But generally speaking, price reflects on quality. So, speaking of price, this one, uh, this actually has a pretty big range of price. I've seen these as cheap as $20. As expensive as forty dollars, you don't usually see, um, you know, the range that big. Usually, it's like a ten or fifteen dollar, you know, difference. But um, yeah, I mean, for for argument's sake, let's say it's a twenty-five to thirty dollar knife. Now, if you remember back, I did a review on the uh, uh, Stat Gear branded Pocket Samurai. Okay, and when I was doing that, uh, you know, testing for that knife, I was also testing this knife. So in that video, I referred to another knife that I thought was a better bang for the buck. This is the one I was talking about, okay? Although this is a slip joint and the Stat Gear knife was a frame lock, um, they're practically the same size, both being Tanto, and again, both being in the $40, you know, the Stat Gear one was $40, this one obviously can be had for less, but, you know, around the same price and same size, same purpose, I, I definitely want to compare them to, to each other. And this one definitely uh, was more favorable by myself. The Stat Gear knife was pretty cool, a lot of novelty there for the price though, I would like to see that more in the $20 range like this one could be had for. Um, but I really like this knife a lot. One of the coolest things about this is the uh, nail nicks. All right, usually when you grab your, your blade, a lot of people are gonna do a little pinch grip, right? You just grab it like that and open it. it. Just, I mean, you don't have to be taught this, just as human beings, we know how to open things, right? You grab it with your fingers. But there are nail nicks that run the entire length of the blade here on both sides. Okay, so if your fingers are slippery or the knife's wet or whatever, or as it gets older or it gets filthy, it's going to be harder to open. Um, you literally just use your nail in this groove, and that gives you a better grip. But what's nice is that it's truly like ambidextrous. A lot of times, slip joints will have a little nail nick about here on the blade, but not oftentimes they're on the other side. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But this is a pretty cool design feature. It looks nice, but it is functional. So this groove, it goes all the way across on both sides, are the functional nail nicks. All right, so you can see where it protrudes out. It's just really easy to grab. So I tend to you know, put a finger on the side and then use the nail neck on the other side. Just really easy to uh, open and close. This does have a very strong back spring. All right, you can hear that snapping. You know, it's very, very strong. It does have a half stop, which is a very nice feature. Okay, but it doesn't take a lot of pressure to close this, but it's more than other slip joints, okay? It is a stronger back spring, which I really like. Also, the, uh, the fit is perfect on this. The base of that blade matches up with that back spring perfectly. Very, very well executed, very simple. Uh, this is a pin construction, okay? See, there's the pivot, all right? There's the uh, other pin for the back spring, and of course, for the frame to keep it all together. And you can see this does have a little lanyard hole. It does come to a point in the bottom, which is really nice. Big groove on both sides, again, just to give it an aesthetic. Uh, when using it, you, if you're going to hold it like this, um, it does, you know, function as a little bit more grip. Generally speaking, when I'm using knives like this, I'll put my finger on the, the you know, back of the uh, the tip here, ripping through boxes or whatever. Um, pretty comfortable. My the only downside here is that the um, the G10 here, it's not as finished as maybe I would like it. It's a little bit sharp on the corners here. Could have been rounded off a little better. You know, extra steps in processing your knife obviously is going to add to the price. I don't know. What the price difference would be i'd pay an extra five bucks you know to get those nice and rounded but it is what it is that's really the only negative with this one is that it does have kind of sharp corners and sharper edges on the uh you know handle scales on the g10 but uh really nice though i mean very precise uh design here i like it a lot it, it is very sharp the hcr 14 mov you guys know it's kind of you know on the soft side it's not going to hold an edge forever but uh, with proper maintenance, I just drop this up. It's very easy. Obviously, being a Tanto, you just do a couple passes on your flat here. And then with the angle change, literally just change angle in your strop, give it a couple passes. 
you don't want to round off that secondary point. Oftentimes that's what people do on accident when they're sharpening, you know, their Tanto blades. You have to treat this as two separate blades. This is a blade, that's a blade. If you treat it as one blade and you do that sweeping motion whether you're sharpening or you're stropping up, you're going to end up rounding out the secondary point. Not a huge deal or anything, but just, you know, keep in mind. It's something that, that's very, very common. Happens all the time. But uh, this thing is super lightweight, 0.8 ounces. I mean, it weighs nothing. I like that it has a lanyard hole on here. When I was carrying this, I carried it just loose in the pocket, like a slip joint. You know, or most slip joints, how I carry them. Um, but I think uh, I want to try in the future to pop a little uh, split ring on here and put this on the keys. Because this has a strong back spring, I'm not worried about this opening, you know, getting banged around the keys. And it's a pretty decent size for a little keychain knife. So I think that would uh, really excel in that purpose. But what I like about this one, I think this is just super, super classy. Um, this is like a cool little, more affordable slip joint to throw in the pocket for special occasions if you're dressed up, dress pants, stuff like that. All right, just wanted to focus in real quick here to show you there is a blade choil. Nice attention to detail here. Let me give you one more uh, close-up shot here before we go. Centering is perfect. I like it. I like it a lot. So if you have opinions on this knife, please let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you soon.